recording has commenced. Hello. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you good. Okay. You want to see the kitten? Oh, I do want to see the kitten. Oh my goodness. Look at, is he, do you know what sex he is? Is he he's male a, or female? We're pretty sure he's a boy, like 90%. He's a boy. It's hard, uh, it's hard to see when they're this young, but... It, yeah. Oh, he's darling. <laughs> Look at him. Oh, and what do you call him? Oracle. Oracle. Yep. Oh, I like that. <laughs> and just the one, yeah? Yep. We thought we, were, we, we thought there were going to be like four or something, but she just had one and that was it. <laughs> so we don't have to worry about trying to find homes for the rest of them. That's nice. That can be, yeah, that can be a, a fun task. Yeah. When you so have eight or nine kittens to uh, <clears throat> try and find homes for. Right. Yeah. So how have you been, Rebecca? Uh, we're recording okay. already, just so you know. Okay. Is that okay? Are we are we live or it doesn't matter? I guess. No. Either we're, way, it doesn't. We're okay. Not being live. I get a little uh, nervous or verklempt as it is, so I thought, well, maybe that will not that will help eliminate some of the nerves or whatever. So. No, you you did. I did ask you so you could have a choice. So we're we're not. Going yeah, live. I appreciate that. Thank yeah. you. How are you guys doing? We're pretty good, considering doing the circumstances. Good? Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a circus, you know, it's a three ring circus and everybody's watching and hopefully it doesn't turn into, you know, too bad of a train wreck, but that's what, that's what we're here for is to try to guide it into something that retains some semblance of coherence and respect even for the people that are involved in all of this. I feel so. Absolutely. How have you been? Good. Uh, Good. Good. This last, I don't know, like the last week or uh, week or two, there uh, seems to be like a lot of um, fear really being, and I don't, I don't watch the news, you know, I don't live in that world watching the news or anything like that, but there seems to be like a lot of fear being pushed. I, I've been feeling that like within my own little world within myself. And so I don't know if that's just me working through some things that I haven't worked, you know, completely worked through yet or if that's coming if that's just like the collective kind of feeling and mm -hmm. you know kind of pushing down but there's but that's it's eased um, um it's over more... the last several days oh, but eased. prior to that there was a lot of that just not sleeping very well um yeah yeah it the collective is sort of uh well, the thing about it is whether you're believing in the, you know, the mainstream mainstream narrative, which is 99.9% .9 horse shit, or if you know that there's a sort of more sinister agenda going on, none of those two options is something that makes you feel nice, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a sort of a lose-lose situation, no matter which way you look at it, but, you know, we're here to help ground the situation and and help provide some some anchors for people who may not have any clue what's going on you know because eventually everybody's going to see it it's it's not going to i think so it's not going to stay everything is not going to stay hidden forever no i was i was talking to my mom i went to visit her uh friday and we were talking about just a lot of things going on and and i was kind of conveying to her how i kind of saw everything happening like within myself but then also like outward and it just it feels like kind of like a like a turbine I guess the motion of a turbine just rolling and then catching some in it mm -hmm. and then going forward and catching others in it and I just I feel like I don't know I get that that visual of that's somewhat of what's going on um like a wheat harvester pulling the wheat up yeah <laughs> yeah yeah there there are definitely harvest motifs all over the place there are plenty yeah. of churches that are like named the harvest, which is pretty ironic and funny. A little creepy. A little creepy, but all of it's creepy. creepy. I mean, if you think about it, if you go into any of the the regular religions, most of them, with the exception of perhaps uh, you know Buddhism or, or the Eastern philosophies, which actually teach like a very sort of balanced viewpoint. Aside from that, it's all this 
monotheistic Avenger God that jealously guards his children and you know it sets up the the good side and the bad side and that that whole thing is repeated over and over and over. That duality. Yeah. yeah. It is. So if you don't want to, you can do that. I'm not saying don't do that because we're here to experience and we're here to experience duality. So you can jump on that and and like ride the waves. But at some point, everyone is fed up with that. And, and we're not going to be in this duality system forever. Like at some point, we're going to go somewhere else or we're going to go to a place where the pendulum is not, you know, swinging so low and it's not so highly charged in every single situation where it's not so uh so much hidden everything like everything is hidden everything is lies you know it's yeah. not, we're not going to be here forever yeah we may be no, and, it, and it's forever, interesting to observe it's in i'm sorry what we may have to or or get to exist forever as eternal beings in some some way shape or form but not necessarily in this exact environment everything is always changing absolutely absolutely yeah. I interrupted something. What were you saying? I don't remember. <laughs> it's okay. It comes and goes. I don't hang on to a whole lot. Well, usually, so it just it'll come back if it needs to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. Have you had any other discussions with sort of uh, family friends that have been conducive to to actually looking into what's going on, or have most of them been blocking? Uh, you know what? Honestly, I want to say for the most part, everyone's been generally pretty receptive uh, to to that conversation. Um, there has been some blocking, but overall, I, I I think it's more so. You know, everyone's see. I think most people feel that on some level, anyway, right? That there's something there's something wrong, and so they're. They, I lose my I lose my words so easy. I have all this rolling around, and I'm like, all right, because I'm going to talk about this and this and this, and then it's just wiped. And it's just, okay. It's not a problem. Just do you, blank. Do you have Do you have anybody that you've noticed has sort of come around finally because it's so drastic and in your face? Because I have, you know, I, I have a few people like that in my close vicinity where it's markedly different approach to to what they think is going on. Not a lot, but yeah. A few. Yes, yes, I'd say so. I'd say so. Um, yeah. So you said you mentioned you wanted to talk about targeting a little bit. I didn't. I, think, I didn't yeah. know that. I didn't know you were a declared targeted individual. That was kind of news to me. So. I don't. I don't see, and that's the thing. I don't declare myself that. I just had these experiences within this concentrated span of time. And I didn't know what was going on. Like, I, it was just the weird occurrences. It started with my phone. I thought there were a couple of coworkers at work kind of messing with me using some type of technology that I didn't understand via the phone. And I thought that it was just that initially. So I kind of brushed it off as like a prank. Just certain, for example, I would, I would say or think certain phrases at home, in, you know, in the privacy of my own home. And then the next day, someone would be word for word saying that exact same thing. So it, it started little, little things like that. And so I, you know, I kind of, it, it peaked something within me and I started to see a pattern. And then more and more, it just kind of snowballed into this thing where all these odd occurrences were happening. And I, you know, I tried to convey it as best as I could that I, how I understood it to, you know, my family, my friends, and, um, and it was just like, ah, uh, you know, what are you talking about? That's nuts. You know, there's, there's no one's following you. No one's listening to your conversation, you know? And I, I'm like, yeah, why wouldn't when I understood their, their thought process with that, like, why, why would anyone do that? Um, so then I started to kind of, I felt a little isolated because of that, because I knew these things were happening. I couldn't really explain it. Um, and, and so I started to just look, Google, I Googled things, to, you know, yeah. what, what is going on? You know, and, and that's where I kind of came into the targeting. So I don't necessarily like identify as a targeted individual. I just know that some of the stuff that I experienced is a lot of what targeted individuals claim that they experience. Right. So that, that's why I use that title for lack of a better word. 
I guess. Yeah. It, does that make sense? Yeah, I, I think there are, there are lots of levels to that phenomenon. And it, it also it depends a lot on the individual and how much, as we are manifesting beings, we're, we're helping create the reality as we go. It yeah. depends on you, the individual, how much sort of power you, you outsource and give to, you know, if there's entities fucking with you or something. Yeah. If you claim your own power and say, no, thank you, and, and if you do target me, then I'm going to send something back and it's not going to necessarily be a fun time for you. Like, there, there are lots of ways to combat it, but it doesn't sound necessarily like you're saying this is uh, attacking style. It's more like you're it, w- noticing weird it, synchronicities, right? Kind of a, thing. a lot of that, but there was, there was some attacking and there were times where I was, I just thought that I was losing my mind, like frankly, mm-hmm. and, and, but overall, like, I guess my observer self or out, you know, outside of myself experiencing that, I kind of always looked at it like there was something to be gleaned or learned from it, no matter what was happening, because I didn't understand it. So, so for myself, I, I really had to kind of, you know, okay, I'm, what can I learn from this? I don't know who's doing this, why, if it's myself doing it to myself, you know, I, I didn't understand it. So I just had to look at it from like a learning perspective as shitty as some of those lessons were and um or or traumatic or torturous and um and just pull what i could positively out of it and do the best that i could from that i guess and it wasn't all bad like there was a lot of cool like cool like you said synchronicities or events or things that occurred within that so it wasn't like it was just like i was being pummeled with like you know attacks Although there was some of that, but there was there was some really cool stuff also, um, and just and in that it kind of opened up this entire world and learning for me, um, and, and that was good mm-hmm. overall, you know. Do you have like a rough timeline of when you started noticing anything like this hap- start happening? Um, yeah, I generally want to say probably about what you, we're in twenty twenty one, so maybe like. 2014, I, I the prank, what I thought was like pranks on the phone from coworkers happening yeah. roughly around then, maybe 2015, 2014. Um, and then it gradually, you know, went, went from there. Like, uh, what are they, what is it? Um, street, street theater. Yeah. There was like a lot of that happening. And that was interesting because I would, you know, say, to my husband, and maybe I was working through something, and oh, I, I just feel like throwing myself on the floor, and you know, like a two-year-old, and kind of throwing a fit. Like that—that's how I felt about whatever was happening in that moment, and I conveyed that to him. And then the next day, there was literally a woman at the grocery store where I worked who threw herself on the ground, yeah, and had a fit like a child. So it was just like <laughs> weird little little things like that, and then and then I kind of in that and going you know learning those things I realized like the power of the mind and and what we think we can create so then I started to kind of look into that as like a probability and well you know whatever this is maybe that's some of what I'm experiencing and and capable of right and so I kind of played with that a little bit um so yeah were you (laughs) were you able to sort of like guide it guide it at all like at times, you, for you sure. Said, you know, I, the, the the woman throwing a tantrum thing. Like you could say, okay, well, it's just copying me. It, you know, it's it's taking my thoughts and putting it into somebody else. Like I could I could control this or I could play with this, right? Yes, to a degree, yes, yes. And I and I did, I guess, for a time. But then that felt, I don't know. There was something about that that felt very foreign, and um, uh, I didn't I didn't necessarily like the thought of myself controlling another person Mm -hmm. so when it became that thing i I kind of um i shunned it so yeah (laughs) that just shows you're not one of the the manipulators that they would jump at that opportunity oh i get to puppet this person yes give me give me the reins yeah no i mean but (laughs) it but in, in a but then i also looked at it like if that is something that i have the capability to do then you know, like anything, I could use that for a good thing. Like maybe that is like a programmer or a creator being or mm-hmm. whatever, you know, these terms are that 
I could maybe use that in a good way. And so like, I don't know about like as an influence or whatever, but maybe looking at it in those terms and like using it for good, I guess, rather yeah. than like yeah. manipulation or control. And then, so I considered that also. And yeah, and that's kind of where I'm at now. But I still am trying to like grasp these certain things because some of it seems fleeting and it doesn't, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, it doesn't I, hold for very long up here. I feel like, uh, it's kind of like two, there are two aspects that I feel to this, this thing that we're talking about. There's the aspect where you have actual like people sitting somewhere behind a desk pressing buttons. I feel like that exists to some extent. I do too. Yeah. With the aid of quantum computers. And then I feel like on the flip side, there's the tech itself that's embedded in all of our devices, which it, from predictive text onward, it, it has been ingesting all of our information as data points and it finds ways to like throw it back at us slightly tweaked to see if we can buy something. It's not necessarily all bad. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a way to try to sort of synchronize the human being attaching itself to the computer and make sure that there's some sort of viable flow that's happening to where your attention stays there and you're not you know, if the cell phones had their way, we would be staring at them 24 seven and we would never do anything else because that's, yeah. we, we're a source of energy and the, the cell phones are using us as, as hubs, as nodes with this giant, you know, global brain. It's a big brain with everybody, you know, that's connected to the internet is connected into it. And that, that is, a, that is a main, like the attention, the attention is so, you know, who has whose attention and where is your attention and what, you know, what is your attention? That, that's, that's, I, I feel that that's a huge component of, of like all of this. Where is your attention? What are you, what are you focusing on? Mm -hmm. What are you giving your attention to? Like, at least for me that I, I'm. That's a hundred percent it because we, we have the, if you've meditated before, then you know that you can disengage from the world, right? You do, you do not have to be plugged in somewhere, giving sure. it thoughts and energy. You can stop and you can sit in your center and you're, you're at peace. So the idea, and you, you know how the devices do, if you're watching anything on the computer or if you're listening to Pandora, Pandora doesn't really do it anymore, but all of these things for the most nope. part after 10 minutes will we'll say, are you still here? Are you still watching? Are you still listening? And it's like, it, that's annoying at first, but the, what it, the purpose of that is to ensure that your attention is still being fed into the machine. Because once that stops happening, then, it, you know, it, it's losing a source of energy. Like, hey, hey, look over here. Hey, did yeah. you forget about me? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, I have the, the Pi app that mines crypto. And the only thing that I'm required to do to make sure my phone keeps mining is press a button 20 every 24 hours one time but that still takes like one minute to log into the app to look at it to press the button so it does take a little bit of my time but it, that in and of itself just shows me we are very valuable to to these programs very valuable and we can determine how we so long as we still have control of our mental facilities which a lot of people don't now but if you still have that then you are the purveyor of your kingdom. Like you get to decide where you put your, your attention, where you put your energy. If you withdraw your energy from say corporations that are enforcing ridiculous mandates, then that, you know, if enough people do that, then they'll start starving. Like France had, I saw a video, I think it was France, uh, a restaurant said, nobody can come in and eat unless, you know, your passport is good and yada, yada, yada. So they all got their food somewhere else and they all went into the street and they had, you know. They yeah, had I saw a, that. Yeah, they had a nice little get together. That's, I love, I, that's beautiful. Yeah. So we have the, we have power. It's, and that's why, you know, the big tech companies, whichever of them are aligned with, let's make, you know, full slaves out of all the humans. That's why they get so like anal about, what information is allowed to be shared on these platforms because humans know how to get in a group and have a good time like it's not something that we have to learn how to do that's what humans do naturally so they want to see if that's happening and try and stop it and it's ridiculous to even to see like the stuff they're trying to push like they want people to be separated from each other isolate like you're a you're a disease-ridden 
sack of filth, you know, like that's what they want everyone to believe is that you're, you're just this. And people do and people do. And that, that pisses me off. That's heart wrenching and that, and I know, you know, you got to keep it centered and don't feed into it, but uh, that, that bums me out that, that people really feed into that and they feel they, they believe that and they eat it up and, and perpetuate that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it, they would stop doing it. a lot of people are, they're like uh, babies. Yeah. The whole, the whole human, you know, population that's here for the most part are on some sort of auto mode or, or, you know, they're just cruising along and whenever a sign blinks, any sign, like you could go control them if you wanted to go to a person and say, Hey person, there's a such, such and so happening. And if you're, if you command enough authority when you're talking to them, then they're going to do what you say. Everyone, everyone is like highly programmable right now. Highly, highly programmable. And the ones that are doing the programming, for the most part, are you know they're they're the the bad uh, the malevolence. They're the bad script writers. They're writing shitty scripts, and the play is ridiculous. Like looking out what's happening on the big screen, and it's not only that. I there are plenty of people who I I see that they have uh, their own power and they're affecting change. But for the most part, somehow we allowed every single major media station to be controlled by you know a couple few bank bankster groups and that's it and uh, that's not conducive for creative living no it's not they okay what is andrea working on now i like to see her projects what are you working on i'm actually she's actually taking a break which is very unusual for her she needs a break. Oh, yeah, you're making soap now, too, huh? I noticed that. Yeah. You enjoying it? So, I am, yeah, I am. It's fun. It's fun to um, pour and create and try new things. My sister really, she she's my she's my number one customer. She loves my soap, but, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. It's fun. It's fun. Something to delve into, something different. So. Yeah, all, all of these self-sustaining things, I think we should be that's all we should be doing really is number one, make sure that you have enough. Like, like this is what I, I'm not any fear monger at all. For the most part, I see everything as a giant show, but I do feel that they are going to try and crash the, the supply chain at some point. And the whole point of that is, is to get people in a position where they need your, like where we need their help. If you're if you have enough food and, and your job is fine and everything is okay, you don't need anybody's help for the most part. But if there's no food food available and there's no nothing available for the most part, if you have not set yourself up at all, then you're going to be at the mercy of whoever is guiding the thing. So I think it's good to have a few months supply of non-perishable food and have some skills, know how to garden, garden if you can. Because Absolutely. when the system crashes, which it will inevitably at some point, if you don't have a way to be self-sustainable, then you're going to have to go to the government and take whatever you know disgusting rule set comes along with their with their uh, what's that stuff called? Uh, <laughs> it's like the green stuff that you drink. I forget. Soylent green. Soylent green. Yeah, they're going to give you soylent green, and they're going to say. They're going to give you There's a actually food products that exist that are, not to interrupt you, but that are actually, soy, like, we saw a Soylent yogurt the other day, and I was like, are you serious? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why would you do <laughs> Why? Yeah, but, so yeah. so it's actually, like, I think a lot of people don't believe that stuff happens. It's a weird thing, like, a lot of people are like, no, like, it doesn't, that doesn't it, everything is real. Like everyone's stuff is going to happen. Like, if you're a Christian, you're going to have the thing. You're going to have somebody come save you or, or not. And you're going to go to hell. Yeah, or if you're neutral like me, then it's going to be like neutral and fine all the time. Even if the screen goes crazy every once in a while, everyone's like internal most, because that's the only way that we create is we create from our belief system. <laughs> so if you don't believe something can happen, then it doesn't happen. If you do believe it can happen, then it might happen. That doesn't guarantee it, but. And that Gary, 
can I ask you about that? Because that's something that, how, how does that work though for everyone? Because say that, say that whatever percentage of the population has this, we'll just say a, a Christian belief sect or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. How do, and, and, you know, for people like you or others or myself or, you know, whoever's included in that or, or doesn't want to include themselves, however that works, how does that play out for the rest? Because, and, and that's what I honestly, like, I, I, I wonder about that because, okay, like, I can hold my own and I can have this belief set and be balanced and, you know, handle whatever's going to happen and I will same as you or, or others. But if there's this huge percentage of people that want like this rapture scenario or, or this, you know, what an apocalyptic scenario uh-huh. to happen and that will play out because so many people believe that to be so how, do, how does that, how does that fit for it? Well, like, what does that look like for everyone else? Because you, do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. About? Yeah. I know what you're saying. I, I, I sort of like, because I wonder about that. I went like, along uh, the same line of thought, but th- like what I what I usually come back to is remembering that things like torture do exist, like vast amounts of force on beings does exist and can and has happened to me and likely will happen at some point in the future. That I'm not not saying like we're not like all powerful in that sense. You could say we're divine, we're sparks of God, whatever, but it's not in that way. It's not like I get to snap my fingers and magically everything turns out how I want it to. That's not how it works. But in the in the situation that you're talking about, so you're saying like, am I going to see all the Christians floating up in the rapture and I'm, am I going to have to somehow well, make a choice whether, you know, are they going to come say, are you Christian or are you not? And then try to send me one or one way or the other kind of thing. Well, no, yeah, I just, I just wonder if, if the, you know, like you said earlier, it's going to play out how you want it to play out, your belief set. And, and if we're all you know, have, have this um, ability to bring our beliefs to life, which we do. And, and how does that, you know, how does that look for everyone else with all those differing belief sets? And if things play out as you believe, if you think it, so, so it is, how, how does that work for all of us together? Like, that's what I, you know, like, and I know that's kind of where we're at. Like everything's kind of like, ah, (laughs) It's kind of confusing, and, and, and I know it's, it's hard to look at, right? It's hard to look at self-responsibility. We don't really like it. So even when you're saying things like, well, how is that going to play out? Like, you're asking for me to, like, you know, to, to define paint, it. To, to no, paint the picture just, for you. And, I'm, and sure. that's what I'm saying is, is I, I can do that, and, and you can take on that picture. But at the same time... I like, have. <laughs> <laughs> at the same time, you can... Depending on your own belief in yourself, though, if you say, I want to manifest this thing or I, I would like it to turn out that way and you don't believe that you have any power in that situation, then it's not going to happen. Yeah. So, like, I, I just try to stay creative with it. So if I imagine a scenario where a bunch of Christians are floating up, you know, to be raptured and then I see a bunch of other ones dropping into, you know, gaping chasms that have opened up, I... What I would do is I would say, well, I know that the, the, the force here wants everyone to, to pick a side. And I, what I would do is I would go, you know, find whatever demon or, or God thing was managing. And I'd be like, hey, man, like, like, I'm not either of these. And why are you only giving me two options? Like, I would sit there and I would start, <laughs> I would start challenging the narrative. And, and, like, I'm constantly playing with it and also, like, surrendering at the same time, if, if, if you can imagine what that feels like. It's, so you're controlling and then you're also saying, at the same time, whatever is happening right now as I watch is literally what's happening. So there's the part that so-called God is doing and there's the part that I'm doing. And those two come together. Sure. That's, that's how I would do it. There's no answer. There's no, like... I don't... And I don't think there is. I just... I lo- I'm not, I, I, I can figure it out on my own and I have, and I, you know, ran it through and scanned it through. And so there's that, but I just, I'm curious as to how other people, you know, it's not to lock anyone into anything or to, you know, it's like how uh, creative can you It's just, I'm just, you know, I'm just curious that those are things I think about. So I wonder what other people, you know, how, how they see that or, or what that, what that means. I, I yeah. always I always fall back on how creative can you get. So like if you are in a situation where things are going crazy, just check with the narrative in your head, 
put because it's always constantly updating itself like just imagine if some of these things came together and all of a sudden you have the christians going up and down and then you have muslims and you see all their virgins waiting up for them if they kill the right amount of people and you combine these theologies together and say do i want to jump in there or can i or or should i you know claim that i'm exempt from this shit because i don't believe in it like if you always leave it sort of open but play with the narrative at the same time then you get like this nice combination and and then a A nice balance yeah Yeah. and and then it's not the whole weight of like deciding where the universe is going to go is not solely on your shoulders because nobody wants that anyway it's too it's too much yeah yeah that's heavy yeah yeah Um. and just remember life is fucking weird and the whole thing is weird yeah. It's, it's very strange. Incredibly weird. Yeah. And it never resolves itself. Like, it's never like, well, everything happened and the rapture happened and now here we are. Well, guess what? Here we are then is exactly the same moment as we're having now. It's not any different. You know, maybe people will start believing this or that story and they're like, well, something has solidified or the cement is hardened or yada, yada, yada. But it's always the same thing. It's always open. And, and even if you get yourself into a situation where you're in hell, which I have been in. If you yeah, don't want to be, in, if you don't want to be in hell, you have to create yourself out of it. You do. Yeah. If you don't do absolutely. that, guess what? You're staying there, and you're the one that put yourself there. Nobody else put you there. Yep. That's the sum of it. Yeah, but self responsibility is a very scary thing. It it's it is and it is. It's it's hard to, and that's what you know, like with the the targeting or whatever, whatever it was. Um, that's where I really, you know, confronted that and, and went through that and worked through that and, and became, you know, I was always aware, like, and always really lucid from, from when I can remember and, you know, and, um, but yeah, I, I really worked through a lot of that stuff and realized the importance of just, you know, being accountable, being accountable for your thoughts, being accountable for your, you know, what you say, what you eat, what you drink, you know, if you need to, not everyone has to worry so much about that, but there are those that, that for them, that might be, you know, something they really have to uh, be mindful of. Yeah. Um, I, I, I tend to, if you, if you're sort of meditative, like I am, then for the most part, it's, it's a wash for the most part from moment to moment because you're already there, you know, but if something like jumps up and starts waving his hand, you know, like, or if I feel a pain in my body somewhere or if all of a sudden the bank account's all fucked up, then I see that as like the, the flow and the balance, which should be all the time is something is weird with it. So I have to go look at whatever's yelling, like whatever, whoever's complaining. And then it's very simple. You just go look at it, pay some attention to it, ask pay it, attention to it. ask yeah. it like what's wrong, you know, it's part of you and yeah. figure out what to do about it. Yeah. That's why I, um, like, I feel good for the most part with a lot of, um, you know, things internally myself and, and how my mind works and my heart and, and how all that correlates. And, um, but my, my thing now, and that it's always kind of been a running theme is like my relationship with money because I see it like it's such a, just a false, you know, I just see it so false and I always have. And so for me, and, and, and because to some degree that it truly is, but for me, I think I really, I would like to, I don't have to do anything, right? None of us, we don't have to do anything. You don't have to. <laughs> but I would like to. to have a better relationship with money. That's, that's kind of, and, and, you know, look at it in a different light. That's something that's presenting itself to me and, and has been somewhat subtly. But now that I've kind of worked through a lot of, other things you know um that that's gonna i think that's my next focus my yeah. relationship with money and and kind of you know not looking at it with such a negative um connotation yeah if, if you load it up with money as bad and it's a false version of energy exchange then that that becomes true for you and it is bad yeah. and it is a false energy exchange and the problem with that mindset if you adopt that mindset in a system where you absolutely have to use money otherwise you starve um what you're doing is you're you're declaring something a sin and then you're immediately the next step going and doing that thing out of necessity so you're making yourself sinful in your own eyes and you're suffering because of it even if you have enough money so if you're going to do something if you're going to engage in something 
it's difficult to do at first, but if you can give all conceptual things equal weight, every single conceptual thing has equal weight. In your own mind, if you just practice it, like money, it's a word. It, it, same conceptual weight as flower, as the sun, as like my daughter. If you can do that, and I'm not saying that's the truth. I'm not saying nothing has different, you know, everything is actually the same value. I'm saying if you can keep the concepts equivalent in your mind, then you won't be charged when you're first looking at the situation. When you first look at what is money, you're not going in there with the subconscious thing saying money is the devil and I hate it and I wish I didn't have to use it. So therefore you'll be able to, you'll be able to look at other alternative ways of thinking about money. And it's not, it's fine. Like, if you think money is shit and it's from the devil and it's going to corrupt you and bring you down to hell, fine. That's a narrative. That's a storyline. If you think money is just a representation of energy because people are competitive and we want ways to be able to say like we're better than, you know, you want to be able to weigh the scale somehow, fine. But it's when you grasp onto, you glom onto one of those things and you're, you're polarized, that's when you, you kind of stick yourself into that particular mental box and that's how you move. From there. That's how it plays out. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't have to be any one way or the other. You can always change if you can all if you can change. See, like we have these grand ideas about doing stuff, but it's really easy when you're mentally thinking about it and then when you're like, Okay, I'm gonna actually make this happen in my life. Do right? it, yeah. Yeah, you see there will be resistance. Your own body will resist you, your mind will resist you, everyone around you will say, What are you doing? You can't be doing this type of stuff. It's easier said than done as, as they say yep for sure but you can do it you can do anything and that's the that's the thing like that sounds so uh it's so cliche but we really can like you just did it. we can do anything you can i would re rephrase it as we can attempt anything attempt to do okay that's that's fair because there isn't a, there's not a limit on, I get a set of words in my head that's an action set, and I do that action set. But I know for a fact if I say, because I like chess, I'm going to win my tournament that I'm playing in next weekend, no matter what, because someone told me you can do anything you want. That's something that I want, so I can do it, right? Right. It's not going to happen. And I'm not saying it's impossible to happen, I'm saying based on what I've observed in human behavior and my own behavior over these past 30 whatever years very unlikely so I might as well assume it's not going to happen there are rules there are some rules to the thing it's not just like a freewheeling anybody can free do anything all. they want because if that was the case then the parasite beings would actually win and we'd literally be in little mind jails all of eternity that's what they would do and what are the what are the parasite beings like sometimes I like are they can a complete and I'm not trying to lock you into anything. I, again, I'm just curious. Like I sometimes I see them as like as I would see myself, like uh, different aspects of myself playing out, mm -hmm. just on a really, really um, uh, far end of the of the pole or the spectrum or whatever. And and just and there's not a whole lot anywhere else. And it's just all in in this you know area, whether that area is you know whatever word we want to give it, malevolent or bad or, or whatever, but that they're just kind of, I guess, far gone. And so that's why it, it or, or is it, I, I don't know, like I wonder about that. And sometimes I think like I, I have a good grasp on what that could be or what that means, but I, I'm not sure. Sometimes yeah, it's I, I have I have some ideas on that. The, the main idea I have about that is uh, the parasitic beings – they're not necessarily like that to begin with. I feel like you can sort of fall. You can notice it in your own life. You can go up and be doing better, feel better, or you can feel like shit. If you like continue on in bad behaviors like drinking all the time or doing crack every day or whatever, it's going to generally speaking lower you a little bit every time. And eventually if you do that over lifetimes and over different incarnations as different beings, that's the karmic idea that eventually you end up at the bottom and you're malevolent or you have no energy and you got to suck everyone else's energy out something like that but my idea with the the 
the parasites as we see like narcissists like that's some sort of vampiric parasitic being i see those as beings that got the opportunity to to like see their own purity see their own divinity see their own actual self outside of the ego structure and uh -huh. either, either it was too terrifying or they just wanted to still say ah here i am and i'm in control and they they did that enough times that they solidified the ego structure into this nearly impermeable membrane as we know some people their ego structure is rock like it's rock rock solid and nothing you do or say if anything it just solidifies it more so that's what i feel like the parasitic beings may be is they just they kept having opportunities to to basically do what the christian thing alludes to which is like you surrender your own like ego structure self to the universe like to the whole to the infinite intelligence that actually manages this thing if you do that then you can allow the ego structure to break down and new things come in it's it's really like it's a matter i think of retaining patterns for too long and they become rigid and hard and and you know the, the universe itself is malleable and it's, it's already moving on but you're sitting there holding on to this like set of mental ideas until they're just rock fucking solid until that's that's basically what you become totally yeah. without any yeah yeah and if you do that enough that you are sort of severing yourself from the source of everything which nobody knows where or how it is but there is some energy that sustains us if you cut yourself off from that for long enough because you want to do it your own way over and over and over eventually you run out of energy because we need to be connected into like the source of all that is so we have energy like we need to be connected to the sun we need to be connected to water nobody can just survive by their own little ego self but if you do that for long enough then eventually you have to suck energy from someone else and that's where these that's where i think these black hole yeah. heart beings that cannot produce their own energy anymore they've evolutionarily found a way to find energy in but they have to take it they have to steal it from other beings and since nobody likes that then they have to cloak themselves and pretend like they do have some form of empathy where they don't have any form of empathy yeah that's my idea. Inver inversion, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it can be as crazy as like this screaming demon that's eating universes to just your simple narcissistic boyfriend or girlfriend. It's that idea of stealing and taking energy is the same thing no matter what scale you're talking about. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I think we're coming right up to about the end of the first one, first, first part. Um, so I usually take a, like a 15 minute break in between. So you okay, can use that the or drink some water or think about what you'd like to talk about on the, the second part. Okay. So we can reconvene somewhere around like 110, something like that. Okay. That works. All right, Rebecca, I'll see you. Uh, okay. See you on the other side. Okay. Sounds good. Bye. Here. Bye. <laughs>